I'm Megan. I'm Colin. And this is Pet Sitter Sitter Confessional. Confessional, an open and honest discussion about life as a pet sitter. Hello, and welcome to a very special Friday episode. What does it mean to give our clients a highly choreographed onboarding experience? And how do we sustain the growth that many of us so desperately want for our business without pulling our hair out? Dominic Hodson, the pet biz whiz, joins the show again to discuss these topics and many more. Plus, we talk about his upcoming live event in March. Let's get started. Certainly, Colin. Thanks so much for having me on again, pal. I'm really looking forward to chatting with you today. Uh, Yeah, hello everybody. My name is Dom Hodgson. I am known as the Pet Biz Whiz and uh, I am British. That's why I sound like this. I don't have a speech impediment. Uh, And uh, yeah, I've been in the pet industry for about 10 years now. Uh, We're actually celebrating our 10th birthday uh, this year. And for the last kind of five years, I have been primarily coaching other pet business owners Um, usually service-based pet business owners, so sitters, walkers, trainers, daycare owners, um, to better improve their marketing so they can make more money, so they can make more of an impact in their community and basically create a really uh, safe and sustainable and successful business. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm, that's my main thing that I do now all the time. Yeah. Well, I love the fact that part of that mission for you is to have them make an impact on their community. And I feel like as pet businesses, we can really do that in, in a lot of different ways. Um, what, what do you see as some of the biggest impacts that we're able to make? Oh, yeah. Like so, so many, you know, we're, I think this is one of the, well, certainly my experience this is one of the few professions where you can, um, you can really fulfill your dreams. You know, you can create a fun, business for yourself. Um, and you can also be incredibly useful, you know, to pet dog owners in your town. Um, and you can, you can obviously help them to enjoy their lives better. You can provide more, you know, stimulation and play and all these kind of things for the dogs that you look after and relationships and a safe environment for them. Um, yeah, there's the same time as like making money, you know, and I don't know, I mean, there are probably people from other professions who say they can do a similar thing, but I think with us pet people, we're so kind of heart-centered and, you know, we really do have the dog's interest at heart. This is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dream, isn't it? You know, you guys, you guys are kind of living that dream, aren't you, as well? Yeah, it's, it's, I, it's kind of weird to describe exactly what we do because the, the actual service has such, like, levity and joy and fun to it, but we take it super seriously. Like it it is life and death in many situations when we're caring for people's pets. And that's a weird balance to strike and to make sure that we're keeping those kind of in focused and remembering kind of at the end of the day, what, what we're in it for and and why we're doing it. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. I agree. hundred percent. You hit the nail on the head there, buddy. I, um, yeah, we're, we're here ultimately to, to be that what we call I've called my service over the years like the sixth emergency service you know so there's like the different emergency services we're the sixth emergency service we're the uh-huh. we're that kind of second family for people who don't have that second family to call on you know for, with their dog yeah and no. yeah it's it like you said it's a super serious you know you there's Whilst it's fun and it's you know running a business, I think and marketing the business is exciting and different directions you can take it in. Um, but yeah, you're providing a very serious service for people, and uh, you know they again. But that's you know that's something to be kind of proud of as well, isn't it? You know, this is something to you know if you you, you know you've got clients who like they trust you guys implicitly, you know, and 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 that's a it's a weighty responsibility, but it's also something to be really proud of as well. But it doesn't come without its, you know, its its struggles. <laughs> and so, you know, you're, you're you're plugged in to a lot of businesses and people are coming to you to ask questions. Uh, with it being a new year and kind of where we've come from, what are some of the, the biggest challenges that you're seeing? I think a lot of the challenges that I'm seeing are, well, they're just a lot of the, there's kind of macro bigger things that I'll, I'll talk about in a second. The, 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 there's the usual challenges of running a business, you know, competition, um, you know, keeping up with demand now that everything is kind of unlocking and uh, people are going back to work and going on holiday and all this kind of thing. Certainly UK anyway, this is this is happening a lot now. Um, 
we've it, you know it's well past its peak fingers crossed the covid and this is just something that we'll learn to live with now so it's like it's almost business as usual now and so because of that we have all of the usual uh things that we we want to deal with you know like competition and um you know making sure that we uh, that making sure that really that the business is growing in the direction that you want it to grow in you know because when people start moving around and they they need they're looking for helpers like us and the guys who are listening to this podcast um it's it's very easy for you to, to go from you know zero or semi full to full to burst in really quite quickly um and you want to make you need to make sure that you are you know premium <laughs> um niched in my opinion as well you know these are that, because this you're going to build a business that you love as well you know it's i think the danger really is i don't think there's yeah i think the big danger really is that you don't think enough about the business side of the business and the direction that you want it to go in and you let the business kind of run away from you and running off in all kinds of different directions because that's this is very, very possible now that we've got all this kind of movement and you know things just things are just getting so much back to normal on a, on a bigger scale we've got things like we've got challenges like um inflation you know is running rampant pretty much both sides uh if for you guys as well as us uh there's certainly over here i'm not sure what it's like over there Colin, but over here there's a bit of a cost of living crisis where energy prices are going through the roof and all these things they it comes back to how you kind of deal with these things like inflation and uh, cost of living squeezes is through pricing power, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, all, there isn't a podcast that I do. There isn't a coaching call that I do with my clients where we're not talking about pricing at some point, you know, <laughs> whether it's increasing prices, pushing price, introducing upsells, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, you know, and you've been, you've interviewed me enough times and you've heard a lot of my stuff and read my emails and things to know this is something that I talk about. But this is, the reason is because like th that's the bottom line, you know, the bottom line, you know, how much money you have in your account at the end of the month or the end of the week and the end of the year, this, a lot of this all comes down to pricing, you know, and how confident you are with your pricing, how much you are seen as an expert in your town. And yeah, you're, you're basically your pricing power. And not only does it affect us, so not only do we need to be um, constantly aware of prices and have the ability to push price to keep ahead of inflation and keep up with this cost of living crisis, like I said, that's going on over here. But that's also obviously happening with our clients as well, you know? So they're, they're going to be, whilst we're getting back to normal, um, people are moving around, they're going on holiday and all these type of things. They're still, their, their budgets are being squeezed, you know? And you always want to be kind of swimming upstream with the type of clients that you're choosing. So you are serving people who have that more disposable income. You know, that's, that's, that's kind of double sided thing. You, you want to be pricing, you want to have pricing power so that you can keep up with this. So you can maintain your standard of living and increase it. But you also, it's much going to make for a much safer business. If you are targeting people who have that disposable income, you know? Mm. Yeah. Uh, inflation over. There's a lot there. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. no, I love I love all of it. Uh, yeah, inflation over here is a uh, hit like seven and a half percent recently. I know you talk a lot about premiumization of service and being premium and being a leader in your market and in the industry. Where where does that start? Right? How how do we start viewing ourselves that way versus just a, a, another company? Good question. I think um, I think it's. I think a lot of it comes down to kind of confidence and uh, many pet professionals suffer from like imposter syndrome, you know, where they, where they worry about not being as good as a competition who've been around longer than them or they worry about, and this happens right throughout the industry as well, not just with walkers and sitters, you know, as just trainers, the amount of trainers I speak to who, you know, they've spent their entire um, career just basically earning money to go on more and more courses. You know, it's like, this is, their life and some of them enjoy it for sure. Um, but it doesn't help you particularly grow a, a, a profitable, sustainable business, you know? So I think uh, for me, you, it's, I think it's not too difficult to be like really good at something, you know, it's not too good. It's not too difficult to be the best that you can be or certainly better than most of your competition, because with the best will in the world, most people aren't doing that good. 
You know, most people aren't offering that great a service. You know, we have we have dog walkers galore in Sunderland where I am now. Um, but like, you know, there's not a week goes by where I'm either I'm seeing people just pulling up in their vans and opening the doors, and the dogs are all running wild, or you know, this person's lost a dog, or this person had a dog out and it got run over and stuff. And like, there's generally the standard. Like, it didn't it isn't that great, you know. So certainly meeting the standard and exceeding the standards. It should be capable. Everybody should be capable of doing this, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you've got to have, be confident as long as you're keeping the dog safe, you know, and you're providing a stimulating environment for them and you're, you're, you're giving the client what they need. Um, this is, you know, that's like enough to start with. Yeah, it really, it really is. And I think, like you said, this confidence part comes in with recognizing that uh, the service we pro- pro- provide, I think just foundational to that is that it, it is needed, right? People need this service. And as you said, as we're, as when we're meeting the client's needs in a safe, proper, effective manner, like that is a great foundation to start from. And then sure, you can get some more education, you can, you know, shadow people, you can start learning other things and growing little by little. But then that real key part there is telling other people about it, right? And that's where this this marketing aspect comes in where we are messaging about who we are, what we do, why we do that. It, you know, marketing is is really a, a, a black box to many people. And I, I feel like a lot of people get frustrated with what quote unquote marketing is in their life because of, you know, how, how they're running it. So when, if, when you hear you know, marketing is not working for me. How should I be marketing? Um, I don't know how to get the clients that I want. What are some of your thought processes where you start kind of trying to lead that person? Usually, usually it's to do with the the who, you know, what, who, who are you targeting? First of all, not enough people even think about that. Hmm. Yeah. So who, who am I targeting in my town? It's a bad idea to just say to yourself that you know i'm i'm going to take anybody um w- with a dog and a wallet you know or a dog and a purse you know what i mean that's my ideal client is somebody with a dog and a wallet and this is what most people start off with this is their kind of attitude you know mm. and consequently you end up getting all kinds of clients that a lot of whom maybe aren't a very good fit for you you know who maybe with hindsight you wouldn't have picked well you can bypass all that by just targeting better targeting better who who it is that you want to be do, that you want to be ha- have as your clients you know and as i said previously to me certainly in my business it's made perfect sense and it's proved to be a winning strategy to target people who want something extra who want something different who are prepared to pay for that as well you know who are prepared to pay for a better service wrapped up in a better market and message and stuff as well you know and it's like <laughs> everybody has this opportunity as well almost everybody has this opportunity in their town to be the top dog you know this is within your grasp doesn't matter whether you're just starting out whether you've been going for two months or two years or 10 years you've got this opportunity now and you know somebody's going to claim that top spot why why not be you um yeah, I, you know, I mean, it's it, it's there. So it's definitely the who, who are you targeting? And then, yeah, like, like why why should they choose you? You kind of, you hit upon this before, you know, who am I? What do I do? What, what do I do this different? Why should people choose me? You know, why should people choose you? So then we come back to things like, uh, like being premium, you know, some people just will pay for a higher price service anyway. It's naturally what they do. You know, they buy the the penthouse and not just the other thing, or they buy the S class Mercedes instead of the C class Mercedes, or you know, all these kind of things. This is just what they do. You know, so you can be the S class Mercedes uh, dog walker in your town, pet sitter in your town. That's that's yours to claim. Um, and then, then there's other things like niching. You know, if you niche down, you're seen as being more specialist straight away. Uh, most existing businesses could just look at their existing client base and see what commonalities there are between the clients. You know, do you mainly serve bulldogs? Do you mainly serve gun dogs? Do you mainly bird dogs? I think it is over there. Uh, Do you mainly serve schnauzers? Do you know, like, what is is the, who are you already attracting that is making up the main bulk of the money that you're earning? That's probably going to be the, dogs that you enjoy working with the most as well you know and it's a, it's going to be like you, you, what you something that you're passionate about might not be breed might be relationship with the dog might be that you know you might mainly serve on your client list you might mainly have 
uh, you know, women over 50, single women over 50, you know, but bingo, that's your niche. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, that is, that is, a, you can take that and target more of those people and you can specialize as, you know, I, I, I specialize in helping uh, you know, or, or older late or older women who are struggling to walk their dogs and stuff. You know, this is this is our specialty. You can specialize by any, anything you want, really. Um, but they, usually there'll be some obvious ones within your your existing client list. If you're a new business, uh, then you should you know go with go with go with your gut, go with your heart, go with what people aren't doing at the moment. And that's where that that pricing power really comes in because that that basically says I can charge what I want because of the niche that I'm in, because that's where the demand that I have that I've kind of fallen into. And I, I love that idea of looking at what you're currently doing, because then you know it comes easy to you. Like, oh, this is how I'm already talking. This is how I'm already messaging. This is how I already am operating. Instead of trying to completely whole cloth change all of your uh operations and, and your business to meet a new demand and just kind of looking at where you are right now. And obviously you can make those changes if necessary, but kind of doing that inward reflection really helps make sure that you are, um, well, that you're aware of of what's going on. I don't think many people can look at their client list or could right now say, what's the vast majority, you know, what, what who am I serving right now? Uh, it, it takes a little bit of time, but it really sets you up very well when you start making business decisions, price increases, new services, uh, messaging. All of that really, as you said, starts with the who, and, and we that's that's on that's on us to figure out. Yeah, and like you said, not too difficult to figure out, really. You know, just take take a look at the take a look at the client base and see, <laughs> you know, see see where the most money's coming from as well. You know, so you might have a lot of clients, but you know, just do a little eighty twenty job on it see which of the 20% of the clients are bringing in 80% of the money for you. You know, that, again, that there'll be commonalities between those people as well. And like you said, this is not a, you know, this is, doesn't have to be a, um, you can make it as big a job as you want it to be. But, sure. you know, if, if I'm guessing most people, if they're honest, their website copy is going to look pretty similar to the other everybody else's website copy in their town you know in in their industry well if you look at if you look down your client list and you have um like i said if you have a lot of cocker spaniels you know and uh or pointer dogs or or whatever um and then you you just you go back onto your website and then you just tweak it you know so you instead of just saying you know we love dogs you say you know we love pointers you know and we specialize in pointers and what this does is it it does two things it it makes the existing pointer clients feel like more like they found somebody who is a is an expert and they, they feel more attached to you you know because you're obviously leaning into this niche and it makes it really easy for new pointer customers to find you, you know, because when they're scrolling through Google and they're looking at this dog walker and that dog walker and the other one, they all sound predator, they all sound pretty similar, you know, and then they stumble across one that is like, it just sings to them, you know, they just, they notice you and they're, they, they're like, they won't believe their luck that they've been able to find somebody who is, you know, who specializes in looking after their kind of dog. The big fear that everybody has with this is they people mainly worry about, oh, well, if I, if I only concentrate on this, well, then I, I cut off all of the other dogs, you know, that I could potentially look after. And in a way, yeah, you do. But, you know, there's enough, as long as there's enough of those particular kind of dogs, um, people will travel far and wide. You know, I have clients who like, they've got, they've got, um, their clients are traveling like hundreds of miles, you know, like to leave dogs with them or to train with them because they've been seen as a, a specialist in this, in a niche. For many of us reflecting on, I know for at least us, um, reflecting on last year, 2021, it was a, it was a banner year for most of us. There was a lot of growth. There was a lot of expansion. There was a lot of demand. Uh, and, and I think we're now looking at maybe some headwinds uh, in 2022 and beyond, or, or maybe not, but how do we, one, 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 something that I know many people struggle with is they're growing like gangbusters and things can start to kind of unravel or feel like it's going crazy. So, so how do we, how do we keep this growth, this momentum up while, while saving our sanity? <laughs> good one good one yeah <laughs> I, I i think um i think when you when you're in a growth phase when you're in, when you're in a real growth phase and you're approaching um 
you're approaching, you know, your books being full, your, your diary being full. This is where like planning and remembering these kind of foundational fundamentals of the business, like pricing and stuff like that. It's this is where it's really critical because when you're when you're busy, you tend to forget about the basics. You know, you tend to forget about thing you forget about things like price. You know, and it's uh, what I would I would suggest everybody does, and including you guys, <laughs> would be to be more aggressive with pricing than what you are doing now. You know, so it's it's always going to be better for you to be slightly higher priced than you are now, almost always, you know, because you're going to have, especially now that you're expanding, you're going to have more margin built into the, uh, the, the service offering, you know, so the staff member gets a good rate, you guys get a better rate. And also you have more, you have more money to invest in advertising. You have more money to invest in on board in the clients and stuff as well. And making sure that they have like a really great experience with you, which in turn makes them more likely to refer you to others and stuff as well. You know, you, there is one of the things that I, I mean, I speak to my coaching clients like every three months. Okay. So every three months we do a lot of work when somebody comes in as a coaching client at the start, we do a lot of the heavy lifting at the start, but every three months we they fill in a, a detailed form that I've put together and then we do a call and all like the call that I did with somebody on Friday we're talking about price again, you know, price comes up. She's done this, this, and this took on two staff members. Um, and the plans a bit of a, um, she's having kind of a, uh, she's been through a little bit of a growth phase. So now she's going through a little bit of a reordering phase, you know, which is great. But at the same time as that, I'm there reminded like, look, you know, if you're, if you're still in demand for this, then we need to push the price with that. Yeah. Because we want to kind of dampen demand a little bit. And we want to, we want to make sure that we're always growing more profitably. You know, so, um, yeah, this, this, it, it keep coming back to it all the time, <laughs> but like, you know, you, you see the, you can, the business can grow as fast, almost as fast as you want. If you're half decent on what you do and we're grow, going through a, like a big growth phase as we are at the moment, it, it, anybody, anybody can grow like really quickly, you know, but it, it ain't much fun just growing quickly. You know, you want to grow probably a little bit. <laughs> not not as quickly and more profitably, you know. Yeah. And yeah, but it, it's true, you know. You um, like you mentioned about you know hanging on to the the horns and stuff of it. Um, yeah, you know, you uh, you you want to you want to kind of ride that wave. And what you also want to do is what the price and power also enables you to do is yeah, it enables you to create, like I just mentioned, a really good experience for the clients, you know. So onboarding materials, onboarding gifts, referral gifts, all this kind of thing. And when you do that, or you know, enroll, enroll your clients, turn it into a bit of a club, you know. So when they join your business, they join in like a club. Yeah. So they're feeling like they're part of something bigger um, and more special than just like a service provider. If you do stuff like that, what you also do is you protect the business as it grows as well, you know, because what you don't want to do is you don't just want to grow and get kind of complacent and have people come in and then somebody come in undercutting you and then the clients are going, you want it when they, when they come in, you want to lock them in, you know, and lock them in for like a long period of time. I don't mean lock them in with like a contract per se, you know, but you lock them in with the experience that you provide for them, you know? So they yeah. feel valued. They feel um, appreciated, you know, they feel like they're part of like something special. And it's, we, we t- it's starting to sound a bit, um, <laughs> as I'm talking about some things that people don't really recognize us, but this, this is a huge part of the job, you know, but provide, especially when you're, you're premium too, is you, you want to provide a premium experience for people. You, uh, this should be a highly choreographed, sequence of events as well you know this this Mm. onboarding experience and what follows after that as well because it needs to be (laughs) you know it really it really needs to be this is the most you know when somebody comes into the business they've taken a massive step obviously to to go from you know stalking you on facebook and uh you're asking for (laughs) asking people if they if they can recommend you and all this kind of thing you know or maybe their situation is um with their dogs deteriorated to a point where they're like desperate for your help whatever it is they've taken a huge step to get in touch with you but that is not 
it's not like you do the meet and greet and then, you know, you agree to look after the dog and then that's it. It's a lock, you know, they'd, you, there's a lot more to it than that. You know, there's such a thing as like buyer's remorse. You know, you don't want people, you want people to feel happy and feel welcomed and feel appreciated and feel like they want to spend more money with you as well, you know, and they want to refer you with their friends and they understand the rules as well of the game, which are whatever you want them to be, you know, you know, you can insist on people giving you referrals if you want, you know, this is like, they're much more likely to give them that way. I guarantee it, you know, as well as, as well as, you know, the providing a fantastic experience as well. But yeah, you made a good point before as well, Colin, about the time, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, we time, we money we can always earn more money you know like time not so much <laughs> this is this is it you know this is this is that all of the time that you've got now is all of the time that you're going to have so you want to make sure that you're that you're growing that you're not just growing for growing sake and you know it is possible by doing some of the things that we've talked about now to, for, to grow the business without actually as drastically growing the client base, you know, uh, I, I have, I have a goal for this year. So I have a goal for this year to double my coaching business, right? It's a, it's a big goal. It's a lofty goal, but I, I won't hit that number by doubling the amount of clients that I deal with. I can't because, well, I can't, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to work. Well, I don't, I don't want to work double the amount of time, you know? Yeah. So well, how am I going to, how am I going to do that then? Well, I'm going to do it through, you know, I'll have to bring some new, some new clients on as well, but I'll bring those clients on at higher prices. Um, I'll target better, you know, I'll target people who um, have six figure plus businesses who they're the people that I'm best off helping anyway, you know, because there's usually loads of things that they're missing. They're usually rushing around like headless chickens, you know, and they're missing all these like really easy wins that are, that are for someone like me, it's really obvious to spot, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, you want to, just want to be careful in this, in this kind of growth phase when, um, you know, when, when it, when, when we're in a phase like we are at the moment and a little bit, I think we're a little bit behind the phase that you, where you are over there, but like money's literally like running uphill, you know, it's like, it, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy to get complacent. It's easy to let the business run away from you. Um, so I, I would really think about, you really, really think about what it is that you guys want, not you guys, you too, but <laughs> you, you and everybody listening to this, you know, what, yeah. what you want, you know, because this is your business. You are in control of it. And I've had to do this several times in my business journey, you know, and, take a step back and say, well, I could do that and I could do that and I could do this, you know, but like really what's making me happy, you know, and how much money do I really want to earn? You know, like how much money do I need? You know, how much money do we need to be happy, you know, to do all of the things that we want to do, you know, and it's slightly different if you have a business that you want to build to sell or whatever, you know, and and, or that kind of thing. But again, does that even, does that goal fit in with what you want, you know, with what you want from, from the business, you know? So yeah, you, you got to really, whilst you, whilst you ride in the coattails of this, you make sure that you're putting these systems in place to lock in all of the clients, to onboard them, to upsell them to higher price services and stuff as well, to get them to refer people. This is, this is kind of how you manage to grow business exponentially without it all just being about more clients, more clients, more clients, more staff, more staff, more services, you know? That's a kind of can be a balancing act, I feel like, too, of when you talk about upselling them to a service, um, on one hand, we we need to think about how and what else we can do to offer to our existing clients. On, on the other hand, we can feel like sometimes we get stretched too thin with the amount of services that we offer. I know that's something that Megan and I talk about is that right now we're really trying to focus on two, maybe three services, especially in our new area, just because it's easier to message and to focus and to to yeah. uh, get people's brains wrapped around what it is that our company is doing. And then adding the second part of like, okay, now let's plan down the line of what we can add to this. So how 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 do we strike this balance between wanting to upsell and provide additional things versus trying to stay focused and and not feel like we, we're trying to do everything. You have like two things going on. Okay. I call it like the twin engines of business. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have the first engine is all about promoting the business, getting eyes on the services, attracting the right kind of clients, 
um, and hopefully, you know, putting the right kind of marketing materials out there, um, offline and offline, we're getting people on an email list, all this kind, doing events, you know, whatever it is, that, that's that's the, the front end, if you like, you know, so that's kind of what you guys are that's what you're talking about there in your, your new service area. Yeah. So that's, that's all the activity. You're trying to keep that nice and simple, which is good um, because then people are going to get to know you for this, for your main service. And obviously you, you think this is your best bet to get fresh eyes on the business, you know, and to bring in new clients for this new thing. So that's, that's engine number one. Okay. Well, once, and then most people only ever concentrate on engine number one, more clients, fresh eyes, more, 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 more. But there's a second engine. And the second engine deals with onboarding, upselling, uh, getting referrals and testimonials, providing a fantastic experience, like all the things that we just talked about before, locking people in, you know, maybe it's cross-selling, um, all, all this kind of thing as well, you know. And, and all of the big money, all of the easy money, <laughs> in your business is made from engine number two. Mm. Okay. It's comparatively very little effort is, re- is required to turn somebody from someone who is using you once a week to somebody who's using you twice a week or from somebody who's using your standard service to somebody who's using your premium service or from somebody who's using a, a dog sitting service to somebody who's also using your grooming service or whatever else it is that you're offering as well. It's comparatively easy to take them from spending a certain amount of money with you to spending more money with you than it is to get them to go from prospect to customer. Yeah. So you need to have, you need to have both engines running, obviously. (laughs) And when, when the, um, when you're doing, when you're a new business or when you're doing what you guys are doing, where you're all, you know, you're, you're starting up effectively in a new town, you know, in a new area, Obviously, most of your efforts go into this because you just want eyes on the business. You want the right kind of people contacting you. You want to be able to communicate why you're different to everybody else and what, how you can help people. Yeah. But you've got to have this second system in place, the second set of systems in place to do all of the things that I just talked about there that engine number two deals with. You know, And if you don't, you just end up with the many-headed beast of a business that is all about more clients, more services, um, more staff and more stress, Mm. uh, in my opinion, anyway, uh, you know, you've got to, this this is balance. Now engine number two is essentially, it's all about systems. It's all about, uh, you know, planning out what the customer journey is going to look like, you know, everything from, you know, scripts, upsell postcards that we give to people, reminders about referrals, you know, there's like the whole list of things that we can build up. You just build it up slowly over time. But, but, but the important thing is that, remember, the big takeaway from this podcast, people, (laughs) is all of the hidden money, all of the big money, all of the easy money is, can be exploited via engine number two. This is where like the likes of a business coach comes in. You know, because they can see all these things, you know, like I, like I said, you know, m- most people, most people doing, you know, a hundred thousand pounds or a hundred thousand dollars or, you know, let's just take that number as a hundred thousand, you know, there's usually, there might be anywhere from like 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 thousand that you can find quite easily. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but without getting, but, you know, but there is, you know, I'm not yeah. blowing smoke on my own, but like, this is, I, I, I do this every day, you know, and it's like the fun part, you know, when I get in the form of someone, right. Okay. What we got, you know, what are the assets? What are we doing? And then you lay it all out and you, you know, you, because, because I do this all the time because it's fresh eyes as well. So whether it's me, okay, I'll take the plug out of it, whether it's me or whether it's any other sort of pet business coach and stuff out there, yeah. this is what you get. The benefit of is, is this like fresh eyes, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so important to have fresh eyes and fresh uh, understanding about our business and continuing to learn about things that 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 are going to help us in the long run. And that that's that's a major component of something that I know that you have coming out really soon, um, and that Megan and I are going to be taking part in as well. So, uh, tell us about Inspire and kind of where the origins of that are and why that's something you think is so needed. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the orange, uh, the oranges. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. The, the apples, the apples and oranges. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the 
there's, the, there's your podcast title. Um, <laughs> yeah, the origins of it are um, in the fact that I I loved events basically. Okay, yeah. I've I kicked off my sort of coaching business with events. I I, I did I did an event. I sold a boot camp. And since I've been a coach for the last five years, I've always had events as something that I do. So what be it, uh, we run uh, like two day, three day boot camps up here in Sunderland. People come from all over the UK to visit them, um, to learn how to, to grow their business. You know, I've done tours of the UK. We've been up and down and spoken at different places. I've done I must have done dozens and dozens of like webinars, you know, online seminars and stuff, delivering all kinds of information to all kinds of different people in the pet industry. I love doing live things. And I didn't have a chance <laughs> to do any real um, in-person live things, obviously, because of the pandemic. You know, we had a um, we actually had a big event planned impact. Uh, I did impact 2019. And then I had Impact 2020 planned, and we've had to put that back. And that is actually happening this May. And uh, what also happened when the pandemic hit was I wanted to do, I thought I'm going to do an online event. So I did an Inspire event then, which was, um, it was about a week long, um, weekend, I think it was, um, event to help pet business owners during what was obviously an incredibly difficult time where we're we're out of it now and things are going wonderfully. But at the time, you know, people were stressed, worried. They were, they were losing money and clients hand over fist, you know, and uh, it was really important time to, uh, for me, I felt it was a really important time for me to kind of step up and help not only my own clients, but the wider the industry as well. Mm. And then this year, I just kind of wanted to start my year with a real bang. You know, I, I, I do a number of different um, events throughout the year and, online boot camps and my business in a box and all these different things. And I've got my impact event happening in Sunderland in May. Um, but I wanted to do something big to kick off the year and inspire uh, the online pet business boot camp. This kind of what I've come up with, you know, so it's going to be a, a week, well, just over a week, almost 10 days. This event is going to last starts March the 11th. Um, I'll be doing some uh, sort of pet business basics, pet business 101 over the first weekend. Um, and I'll also be talking about different ways to market your business, you know, talking about do how to do effective paper and ink, how to do, um, how to write copy that attracts people, how to niche down, how to increase prices without losing clients. Also, how to, different ways to promote your business. That's where you guys are going to come in. Um, thankfully, on the Saturday, uh, talking about the podcast and the effect that that's had on your business. Then throughout the week, we've got a bunch of different people from the industry. Um, industry leading uh, dog trainers, uh, award winning dog walkers. Uh, Colin Taylor, uh, he's a dog grooming legend, Pooch Perfect TV show star. Uh, he's going to be on talking about how to be a dog groomer. So, we're going to do that throughout the whole week. And then at the end of the week, I'm going to do some uh, a couple of days on staffing, scaling, and systemizing the business. So, yeah, and I just wanted to, I wanted to do. Well, there are a number of different reasons why I want to do this event. One is I just wanted to do something big. I wanted to do something big to kick off my year. I, I do best when I do something big, <laughs> when I have big and exciting things happening. Um, so this is like going to be a challenge for me, obviously, because I'm going to be certainly doing or taking part in live presentations for 10 days. You know, I should get sponsored really for this, shouldn't I? It's like <laughs> it's going to be a test of my endurance. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and then, you know, I just wanted to do something really big to uh, to help me attract more people into my world, to help pet business owners. I want to impact a thousand pet business owners this year, whether that's helping people start up or just helping existing pet business owners to have more um, control, more fun, make more money and stuff in their business. And as well, something else which is really important to me, um, I find I get what I want when I help people get what they want as well. So I, this is, I have a sort of a wider um, uh, mission, if you like, this year, which is my, op I've called it Operation Elevate. And this is about elevating and helping um, people who are in my world, private coaching clients, and also people like yourselves who like I respect and uh, see, I think you do wonderful things as well. This is to help me to elevate them and to elevate likes of you guys and stuff too. So kind of everybody wins, you know, we come together over these 10 days. We share lots of awesome information. We get people taking action. 
um you know and uh, you know we'll we'll yeah we'll m- m- make a bit of money along the way but like this is you know it's about yeah me bringing new people into my world i want to find more ambitious pet business owners you know who who are like their their marketing at the moment is like the missing piece of the puzzle you know they're awesome at what they do they love it they love their clients but like they suck at selling and they, they, you know, they can't, they find it difficult to get the reward and the recognition for, um, for their, their superpower skills and services. So, yeah. so yeah, that's, and that's the event in a nutshell, really inspire the online pet business bootcamp. No, I'm, I'm really excited about it and to see all, all of the people come together for that. And I know there's a lot of different moving pieces for this, but if someone's listening to this going, Hmm, is that, is that for me? Uh, is this something that is for people just at the start of their journey? Is this somebody who's been in it for 20 or 30 years? Or, or who should really be considering going to this and taking part? I would say, I would say anyone. Now, I might shot myself in the foot a little bit here because it hasn't, I haven't, I haven't, I've, I've, I have bitten off a lot with this, you know? So like I said, I've tried to do it where it's, um, we've got like at the start of the, the start of the boot camp, I'm doing the business basics, you know, yeah. the pricing, the communication, the niche, and all this kind of thing. Then we're going to go a little bit left field and interview somebody different every day and talk about their business journey. And, you know, there might be people who they don't know where to even start thinking about becoming a groomer or opening a field business or, you know, becoming an animal therapist or something like that. Well, guess what? We're going to speak to an expert who is doing that now. And then at the end of the the week, like I said, for the last weekend, we're going to be talking about some staffing, scaling up, systemizing, how to take that business to the next level kind of thing, you know, and the things that you need to forget. So in a way, I would say anybody who is in the service pet industry, uh, service sector, dog walker, trainer, groomer, daycare, uh, therapist, pet scanner, pet photographer, pet sitter, um, any of any of you guys who are listening to this, you will... I, guarantee you will get value from this from this um boot camp and just as a little um as a little sort of qualifier really i have i have a number of people who have been in my world for like a long time now so they they've been with some coaching clients of mine for like five years okay and they they maybe they're a private client of mine they get a they get a dom's fax on their desk on a on, on, on a monday morning we do a foundations call on a Wednesday. They might listen to the podcast on a weekend. They get my ledger that lands on their doormat uh, once a month as well. They get a lot of DOM and they've done all of the courses and they've been to the seminars. And stuff. These guys are st- will still be here at this event. Yeah. Why? Because they'll pick up something that they've, that they might have missed, you know, or they'll hear something in a slightly different kind of way. And these are the guys who like, you know, for all intents and purposes could probably teach my stuff like as well as I do, you know, (laughs) but because they, you know, because they've had it through repetition and stuff, Colin, but they'll still be there, you know? So if anybody who is new to me, who like for whom if marketing overwhelms you and befuddles you and, you know, it scares you, like, trust me, you know, you'll, you'll go away with like two or three nuggets that will, you know, completely transform your business. Um, and not only that, it's the confidence factor too. So when you, when you hang around with people who are go-getters, who are doing all these exciting things in their business, it, it do kind of rubs off on you, you know, it, it boosts your confidence and it, uh, it helps you lift your ambition and really reach that little bit higher. So, yeah, it's uh, I would say anybody in the pet service sector, doesn't matter if you're starting up next month or you want to be starting before the end of the year or whether you've been going for uh, 10, 20 years, you know, you will I almost guarantee uh, you'll you'll pick up something that is going to help you with your business. So uh, how can people get signed up, find out more information and get registered for it starts? You said it starts March 11th, right? March 11th. Yeah. Great. Thank you for um, reminding me to actually give the URL out. (laughs) (laughs) That is is sometimes a feeling. (laughs) Yeah. So what I've done is I've tried to make it super um, accessible for everybody. Okay. So we've, uh, we've priced the tickets. Now bear in mind and in May, Colin, I'm doing, I'm doing a, it's a completely different event, but I'm doing a three day business boot camp um, in May in Sunderland. So an in person live event. The tickets for that they were they were on special for a thousand pounds each. Okay, and this is a ten day thing. That's online, but it's different. It's not even half or a quarter of that. I priced the tickets at one hundred and twenty seven English pounds. But 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 you can actually get a hundred pounds off the price of 
uh, the ticket if you grab it before uh, the end of Feb. So if you before the end of Feb, if you go and if you go to petbusinessmarketing.com forward slash inspire, you can get a full all access ticket to all of the 10 live presentations that I've just talked about with the 10 speakers of which you and Megan are, are, are two of those. Um, you can get all of that access to all of that and the recordings as well. And there's a bunch of bonuses, too, that I've kind of thrown in for 27 English pounds. So I don't know what that works out in dollars, but it's $40 or something. I don't know. But it's, a, it's a bargain, a bargain of the century anyway. That's awesome. Uh, I'm trying to do that conversion right now. It's about $36 currently, currently as we're recording. Wow. This. Well, there you uh, go. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. And uh, yeah, no, Dom, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, I, I think these kind of events are, are really needed uh, in the pet sitting industry for people to continue to not just learn uh, from other people, but also to start, um, I, I, as the title says, inspiring, you know, inspiring ourselves and seeing more mm-hmm. in ourselves to do bigger and better things. Uh, and that starts with community and education and um, getting plugged into people who are kind of doing what you want to be doing. And so anything like this is is always a, a, a good thing for us. And so I'm really excited and um, we're, we're really um, honored to to take part of it. We will have links to that directly in the show notes. People can click and start checking that out and get registered today. Um, I know it's going to be a lot of fun. So really looking forward to that. Thank you so much for coming on, Dom, and, and sharing uh, more about overcoming these challenges and um, giving us a, a new fresh reminder in this new year about the importance of pricing and the power that it brings to our business. Um, always, always a pleasure to have you on and I'm super excited to, to, for, for everything that's coming up. Pleasure's all mine. Yes, yeah, so I'll see you and hopefully a lot of your listeners at Inspire. Ha, 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 ha,